Let's call the board, uh, order this particular meeting, the special board of trustees meeting of Henry Ford College. Uh, roll call, uh, first item please. Roll call, Hussein Barry here. Fudwa Hamoud. Here. Mary Lane. Here. Celia Nasser. Here. Mary Petrikoff. Here. James Thorpe. Here. And Chair Michael Mead. Uh, here, before we move to the next item, I just would like to take this moment to thank John Sadkowski for his wonderful service. A service with integrity, inclusiveness, good communication, and you just were a really good president. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you. So the next item, please. Action items. First one is citizen participation. Citizens wishing to address the board on agenda and non-agenda items for action who have submitted a blue card to the secretary may speak at this time. The board may not be in a position to respond to non-agenda items, therefore speakers should not <coughs> anticipate an immediate response to their comments or questions. For the benefits of all concerned, do not mention the names of students or college employees. Please limit comments to three minutes. I don't have any blue cards. Uh, I got one blue card. I have a blue card from Mr. John McDonald. Good evening. A day without McDonald at a board meeting wouldn't be a board meeting. Um, I wanted to speak briefly to the millage tonight. I'm not sure how that's going to turn out. Uh, the first point I want to make, I made the other day. Mr. Sadkowski has made projections. Those projections seem to indicate that this millage is very much needed. Um, and uh, if uh, there is no election, uh, at some point in the near future, we're going to be sitting here and talking about the concerns that Mr. Sarkowski had and has. If the item is on the ballot and it fails, at some point in the future, we're going to be sitting here and talking about the concerns that Mr. Sarkowski has. <coughs> if it's on the ballot and passes, and Mr. Sarkowski's concerns do not materialize, the board can always consider the uh, question of what to levy and how much to levy in the future. But at least it will have that opportunity. As my mother once said, and I better get this right, uh, <coughs> it's better to need and not have than to have and not need. And there's a whole list of grammisms I could give you uh, from my mother. <laughs> Second point, this community has invariably supported this college. This community sees that this college is in fact Dearborn's College. Uh, third point, I looked over the campaign literature uh, from the last election. I see the words renew and restore, uh, and that is all I see, is renew and restore. And the fact is the state has walked away from its responsibility. If any entity is at fault for needed millage and tuition debt, it is the state of Michigan. When I hired in, and for a long time thereafter, because when I hired in may be ancient history, about half of our revenue came from the state. About 20% from tuition. Flip those numbers. Now it's around 20% from the state, around 50% from the revenue, uh, revenue from uh, tuition. So who is at fault in all of this? The students, no. The board, no. The state, yes. What the state does not see, and this community has always seen, is that education is a common good. It is not a good to be purchased by those who can afford to purchase it. We have, the state has recognized um, the rhetoric of the few at the expense of the many. And they do not recognize this country has invested again and again in each future generation, invested again and again in the institutions, educational and otherwise, which are the bulwark of this, this country and this community. Thank you. Next item, please. At this point, we're going to get off the agenda and have the president to give us a presentation. Thank you, Mr. Secretary and uh, Mr. Chairman and trustees. Um, I do have a presentation for you on this agenda item, uh, but I, I would like to make a couple comments uh, just as uh, housekeeping matters. And um, the, the first thing I want to say is uh, 
this is my my first time sitting at the dais with you all as your colleague and partner, and it's um, uh, an honor, uh, a little bit nerve wracking, um, but. Um, We've come a long way since uh, I was uh, before you all there, and I, I have worked um, in the first three weeks of my time with you all to earn your trust and respect, um, and I'll continue to do that. And, and the first thing I wanted to do to show that was um, how important it was for me to have a smooth transition uh, between the leadership of this college before I arrived and uh, now since I've arrived, which is why I have John Setkowski next to me here. Um, he, as your chairman has noted, has um, been steadfast in his leadership and uh, humble, uh, despite his great intelligence and knowledge about this uh, institution. Um, so I wanted uh, the symbology of him uh, being here with me, um, and frankly, I also wanted his his knowledge uh, as a lifeline sitting next to me uh, during this important process <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're about to undertake, um, because it is a very important decision that each of you I know are very. Um, a keen to get right and um, I don't think I can uh, give you all the information you you have you need unless and, and until John Sadkowski has an opportunity to weigh in if, if he so desires and then of course um, as I've mentioned to each of you this college is blessed with an outstanding uh, group of administrators uh, uh, from the cabinet on down and um, you'll see them before you here today so uh, before I launch into this uh, presentation I did want you all to know that we have been working hard to give you the information that you desire uh, I have um, aggressively asked you what do you need to hear for, for you to make a good decision here I hope to speak to those concerns but I, I, I will say everything I say tonight and all the answers I, I'll give you tonight are simply in addition to what my friend John Zankowski has given you all in the last several times you've discussed this um, and uh, I invite you to ask any of us any questions, including any of the staff here who um, are ready and willing to help you make this difficult decision. Um, my plan is to give you some ideas about what um, are interesting and, and useful um, data points as to why this millage is um, something we are asking you all to look upon favorably today. Um, the first thing I wanted to do was uh, show you a slide that kind of gives you an idea of where we have um, come as a community college environment in Michigan. Um, there's a slide here that I, I want to uh, set out to you that this tracks the history of all the community colleges in our state since 1992. And the, the, my team has helped me um, put this information together. And each line shows one of our three revenue streams. Um, as President um, McDonald has noted, uh, and, and he said back in, in some grander days of funding history, the, um, the, the boxed line where I'm pointing at represents where we as community colleges, as a function of our budget, a percentage of our budget, what percentage of each of these funding streams we had. So in 1992, uh, if you averaged the community colleges in our state, uh, essentially 49%, I'm sorry, 39% of, of the community college budgets were at state aid. And you can see the trend here up until present time. And I'm, I'm presenting this to you in, in, in pretty fine detail, but I'll, I'll speed up as we go. But I just want to give you an idea of what these graphs mean and they show you why we really came here. Um, and why we are asking you to consider um, another opportunity to ask the community for support for this college. Back in 1992, you see that uh, tuition and fees was uh, down in the 32% range, and it, and it has steadily grown. Um, again, uh, I, I can honestly say to you that President McDonald and I did not get together and, and coordinate our messages, but uh, essentially this graph shows you what he just said to you verbally. Um, now, I, I know many of you know this, but I just think it wor it's, it's worth repeating. This funding mechanism here for tuition and fees um, is absolutely dependent on enrollment. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and as you all are aware, but it's worth repeating, um, our our enrollment, like all community colleges, is counter-cyclical to the economy. And um, most ec economic forecasts for our country and our region say that the economy will continue to grow or at least stay um, moderate growth. 
which is why I'm saying I suspect that this, this trend line for enrollment uh, or tuition won't go up in the future. It, it will flatline or go down is, is what we're projecting. And then what we have is property taxes as a function of, again, what the average of the community college budgets were. And you can see that they've consistently gone up. And then you might see that they dropped here. And this was not a function of the communities going away from community colleges. This dropped from 2007 to 2012. But of course, what we all experienced in this state and probably the country when our property tax values went down. Um, but take a look here. In, in 2017, our colleagues, if we, if we average all of our budgets for community colleges, we're at 36% of the budget for the average community college in Michigan is wrought by property taxes. So here's, here's how we got here. State aid came down, Mr. McDonald alluded to that, and property taxes have tried to keep track to, re, to replace that revenue. Now looking more closely at what we have here at Henry Ford Community College in the past and now Henry Ford College, you see um, some similarities but some differences. The first I want to draw to your attention is the relatively low amount of our budget, and, and this graph shows you if you took our budget at Henry Ford College from 1992 up to 2017, what percentage of our budgets were made up of these three revenue streams? And you can see that we have not really ever gone above 20% for any significant portion of time. For local tax payers. Yes, and, and, and these are the taxes that we're talking about today, the, the, the millage that, the, that we visit upon our, um, our colleagues here in Dearborn. Um, you, you should not be surprised that you see state aid for us dropping off significantly as a percentage of our revenue. And then of course, um, tuition and fees becomes a, a, a high. I mean, we're, at, we're in the 60% range in 2012. And uh, folks, I think, it bears, worth, it bears repeating that this line here for state aid, the, the, the red box line, we have almost no control over that. We've been fighting the good fight to get more state funding, but I, I have to be candid with you. I don't see that number going up. Uh, this little tick up here is, is probably even a false tick up because this is a temporary fix for the MIPSERS gap. Um, so this, this funding stream of state aid has gone down and it's likely to stay down. Um, this funding stream for tuition and fees has gone up um, uh, a function of increased tuition um, but I, we do as i mentioned we do believe the economy in michigan will stay at least good and possibly very good which would drive this this line down for tuition the last line that we have that we have the ability to control at least in some regards tonight is an option to ask the community to allow us to stay uh, at four mills um, now uh, I just want to contrast one thing. Here we are at about 16% of our budget is the, the property taxes here in 2017. I'm going to go back to the first slide and just show you that the average community college is at almost 36% of their budget wrought by property taxes. So um, you all know that that's caused because our, um, our district is small geographically, but um, we we do our best and we, we punch at the high levels of community colleges. But if you, if you are talking to the community about the amount of taxes we visit upon our, uh, our colleagues and citizens here in this community, it, compared to other community colleges, we are not funding our community college to the percentage that other community colleges are. Why am I bringing all this up? Uh, I, I'm bringing all this up because I, I recognize that you all are interested in whether um, whether you should give the citizens the opportunity to keep us at four mills. Recall we have a three mill um, funding mechanism in place and tonight I'm asking you to look favorably upon a five-year extension of one mill. Now, what does that mean for our college? We're currently at four mills and that gives us 16.8 million dollars. As we noted that is um, well below the average on a percentage basis of what community colleges in the state of Michigan have. I'm asking you to look at the renewal um, for the citizens to decide whether a renewal of one mill should go on the ballot. And that would give us $4.2 million or 4.8% of our budget. Now, uh, my team and I 
spent the last two weeks and they've done a fantastic job of, of getting me ready for this and educating me on the background here but the question we kept asking ourselves were was if we were trustees what would we <coughs> want to know and um, the consensus we came to was well what are you planning to spend this 4.2 million dollars or this 5% of your budget on and now the next part of my presentation and the, the bulk of my presentation will be some of the things that we've planned on spending this um, this uh, revenue derived from this one mill is it everything no it, it it can't be and I don't I don't think that would be helpful for you but is it um, is it useful for you to see why we think this is a valuable expenditure for our community and our college I, I think so of that 4.2 million dollars 3.4 uh, 3 of it will be to continue the investments and expenditures we've made over the last four years of this one mill um, and we're going to get into some details about that but the other eight thousand I'm sorry eight hundred thousand dollars of this one mill would be to fund one-time um, expenditures that and by the way uh, if you reference the packet that interim president Setkowski gave to you the last time you visited this issue you would see a list of all the all the expenditures that we we had as a college since this one mill was part of our fu uh, funding mechanism and the big the big ticket item that um, President Setkowski and I wanted to remind you of is the IEMP the integrated energy master uh, plan and um, that is something that we I'll talk about later in the presentation, but I know it's something that you all um, have been interested in, and I, and I hope that, that several of you see as a wise investment. So let's look at those continuing expenditures that um, we have that we've been doing since 2014, 15, uh, 16, 17, and some we just started in 18. Um, in the academic affairs, um, here are some of those uh, incidents of, uh, of expenditures and uh, many of them are uh, hiring personnel many of them are acquiring resources um, and well I, I didn't want to uh, kill you by PowerPoint I did want to, to note some of the people who uh, filled these positions and the cost that they uh, visit upon us to, to give these types of um, skilled trade funding um, the creation of the Michigan new jobs training program um, these um, also were used to uh, create grants, excuse me, uh, apprenticeships for the, the valuable educational products that we as a college deliver in things like information technology, transportation, healthcare, supply chain, and logistics. Um, continuing, um, we're proud of the faculty that we've hired uh, in this institution. You're, you're going to see the dates jump back and forth here, um, and that's uh, because I, I wanted to list these uh, alphabetically. Um, but in, in essence, these are the expenditures we've used for this one mill over the uh, last four years. Um, and um, I have notes on each one of these uh, faculty members. And I, I should note that um, you know, I, I list these names without, uh, I mean, after some careful thought, I talked to um, the president of the AFT whether he thought it was appropriate to list these names. And, and he does think it's appropriate um, because these are uh, valuable members of, of our teaching corps. And here are some of the, the costs that, um, I, I would say, uh, investments in human capital here. Um, uh, we've also uh, uh, expended, expended resources to beef up what we can do as an institution. Um, we um, aimed to increase the amount of resources we can bring into the institution for scholarships and potentially another funding uh, stream. Um, Stacy Basman is um, a new hire here, and I, I think um, Vice President Best, are, are you here? Yes. Uh, is, is, isn't it true that this this Miss um, Basman is responsible for I think now a, a two hundred and fifty thousand dollars scholarship she she earned in the last two weeks? Is that right? That's correct. Th this is the kind of investment. That, I mean, uh, Miss Basman's um, expense as a, as a resource here uh, clearly has return on investment. Um, and I, in, in future meetings, I'm going to let um, Vice President Best be able to talk about that with whatever thunder I haven't already stolen uh, <laughs> uh, uh, on, on that point. But um, you, you all know that we, we went through an audit from the Higher Learning Commission, and out of that came some things we had to update. Um, I know that uh, our, our bylaws and, and some of our policies, uh, Trustee Hamoud, you know better than most of us, 
but it, it visits an expense upon us in our legal department, which we've quantified at $37,000. I know marketing is, a, is an important aspect for some of you, um, or most of you on the um, <coughs> board, and, and you know, we have increased the amount of expenses we've put into that, um, and we plan to go forward. Again, all these expenses, ladies and gentlemen, are things that we intend to spend going forward. And, and when we first started looking at this, there were a lot of expenses we, we um, developed and, and, and put on our books that were one time or we've not spent them anymore. And I thought about listing them to you all, but I thought as a trustee, I would say, well, you've already spent that, Mr. Cavalier. Well, you don't need to tell me how a one mill renewal is useful if you've already spent it. So again, these are all things that we are going to be asking um, uh, to, to use these funds going forward. Um, uh, I certainly know that you all can read as well as I can, so I, I won't read each of these slides. I'll just point out to you that the, the, the information is there for you if you're interested um, to find some good representative expenditures that this college uh, and its leadership has developed um, for what we want to do as a strategic plan. Another question and comment I'd make on this is, um, you might say, well, is this, is this guided by our strategic plan? The answer is yes. Has this been guided by your um, tutelage as our leaders? Yes. Um, these have been brought to you all um, at the board. And um, would, we be, would we be asking for these things unless we thought that they were absolutely necessary? No. But I've heard um, from some of you individually and from some of the community, we all, as stewards of, of this institution's resources, have to try to build efficiencies. Um, and, and we're working on that now, and, and um, I hope in the next several months to be able to give you some ideas about how we're doing that. Um, uh, the uh, student navigators are the last part of this slide. I just I, I know that most of you understand how valuable those are, but that that really is our attempt to increase retention and quality of educational services being provided. Um, we also have to invest in in the things that um, we can touch and feel on this campus. Uh, our classroom technology, um, frankly, is is not as as high as we would prefer it. And, and, and if we could have it to the extent we would want it. Over the next five years, we'd be spending $900,000 a year. Um, this one mill would be devoted to the tune of $100,000. So um, we are, we're not able to meet the classroom technology advancements that we'd wish, but we're starting and we're going to continue to try and make an dent in, in that regard. Um, frankly, we need to upgrade the furniture and, and keep the classrooms feeling like the product that we're proud of. Uh, and if we did that um, to the tune we want, it would be $200,000 a year, and I'm proud to say that's where we are um, now. Um, I know that you all have seen uh, President Sadkowski's presentation of our reserve fund, and I know that the community realizes that we have a large reserve. Um, it's not on this slide, but it's, it's, it's a, a substantial amount of money. Two points on that. One. It's still below what uh, Mr. Sadkowski, I think, probably sees this chart in his dreams. Um, <laughs> um, it's still below not what not what um, what we are saying we absolutely need. What what the independent auditor, Plant Moran, said we needed uh, to keep um, so that we never are in in the corner that um, you all faced uh, before my time here. So that that reserve fund is not something that we can raid all the time, and second. Even if we did, you should understand that we have a deferred maintenance deficit of $22 million. Now, f f just for some background on that, deferred maintenance is a, is a um, <coughs> model that uh, budget makers will use to say, look, we, we wish we could update all of our infrastructure. Uh, and we would fix everything we could um, to the, st the top standard. That would cost us $22.86 million. Um, but we, we're going to defer that maintenance so that we can balance a budget. But those, those needs don't go away. Um, and with this mill, it's still $22.8 million. Here are some of the things that we'll try to chip away at with over the next five years with this mill. It would be all the projects that you see there listed there. Um, and uh, again, I, I tell you, I, I'm, I'm explaining this to you as if I were you and I were in Kroger and someone walked up to me and said, hey, I see the college is asking for a renew of one mil. W what do you need to spend that on? 
um, I'm hoping to give you at least the opportunity to say that th there are answers to those questions um, and that they are valuable. These are not frivolous expense expenditures. Um, uh, I'll close now um, in the last two slides to talk about the thing I mentioned at the beginning. And that is, um, we are excited, and, and John Sadkowski and his team has done, have done a good job explaining to you why this is valuable, but this um, IEMP, it really is the future of uh, how we can get our house in, um, in fiscal shape and also make the college a sustainable method um, for energy conservation. And we're gonna have to chip away at that through one-time expenses, and they're not small. Um, I think, uh, Mr. Sadkowski, the, the, the total bill for this IMP is north of 20 million, is that right? Yes. yes. Um, and uh, I would noted at the beginning of this presentation that I would hoped we would be able to spend at least 800,000 of that one mil revenue towards advancing this cause. Um, the last thing I'll, I'll tell you is um, my predecessor um, put together a, a sustainable budget model that has served this college well. Um, the keeper of that budget model sits to my right here, um, and um, this this is the way we try to give you an idea of how we're spending our money and where we would be spending our money and where we will be with our best guess at variables that some we can control, some we can't. Um, and as best as we can estimate now, um, without the mill, uh, we will start to see shortfalls in, in our budget. Um, by 2020. Um, I'm not here to tell you that um, we're ready to tell you what we would do to respond to that shortfall. Instead, I'm, I'm here to tell you that um, we've, we've looked hard, we've analyzed what, um, what we want to use this mill to continue to advance. Um, and I know that it's not an easy decision for you all. Um, and I'm, I'm asking you to consider that um, in today's declining state revenue for us, in what is possibly a declining uh, number of enrollment, the, the one thing that we can use to buttress those things is a consistent uh, source of revenue, again, still south of 20% of, of our revenue um, from property taxes. And um, what, more than anything I'm asking you to consider is to give the community an opportunity to give us feedback. Um, if the community doesn't see this as valuable, um, I, I, I can take a no <laughs> very clearly. Uh, but give us a chance, um, if you consider it, to go to the community and say what we've said here today, that we are a valuable resource. We are good stewards of the public's dollar. Um, and I, I'll just finish with um, one thing that I'll I'll note, um, I recognize that this is, that this is um, a gem of Dearborn, um, and I recognize that um, we have our role to play in representing not just the students from inside of Dearborn or outside of Dearborn, but also the, the corner of the community that we are. I mean, I'm proud of the way this campus looks and that the community comes here and, and walks. And, and accesses the river. I'm proud of the fact that we have uh, art in the form of um, um, uh, clay and, and fine arts. Um, and, and I think we add value to the community. And I think we could um, make a, an argument to that effect. So, um, Mr. Chairman, um, I hope to answer some of your questions. I recognize that I may not have answered them all, but um, I have prepared for you all um, what if you all were to approve this, what it would look like on the ballot, um, and I'm happy to take any of your questions. Trustee Petlis Cotton. Okay, I'm going to start this off because I've uh, I've been rolling this around. I'm like the rest of you in the community, and and <clears throat> especially with my Federation of Neighborhood Associations, I hear the concerns <clears throat> of the community members about high taxes, but I also recognize. Um, where those tax dollars are going. I think we've all received our uh, property taxes in the mail uh, this past week with a complete breakdown of, of um, where they're going and when you look at it, you know, you, you get a good sense of where it's being spent. That being said, I've got, uh, 
you, str you struggle with wanting to be able to give some relief to the community members, um, to uh, bring our community um, up in the, what I always hear, Dearborn's taxes are too high. Dearborn, I can go someplace else and get a, get a cheaper home, but I always remind people about the things Dearborn offers that a lot of those other communities don't offer for those tax dollars that you pay extra for or you go without. Almost 80 years ago, the community wanted its own community college. You're required by law to be part of a community college um, in the state constitution. If we didn't um, belong to this college, we'd belong to Wayne County Community College. Um, a lot of us recognize the um, difference between them. So yes, our tax dollars are required to help support that cause. I, I'm looking at this this way. Number one, right now if we go for a renewal now, it will be easier than potentially giving a relief and not going after it and then two years from now finding ourselves in um, more dire straits and having to go back to the community fresh and explain why we need to pursue this again. Um, it, it, it'll be a, a, a bigger battle to um, rather than continuing with something that we can explain now as to why we need to support it. Um, I was having conversation with uh, Mr. Cavaluna recently um, at Park Place with Gary Kuhlman and we were talking about the billion dollar investment Ford Motor Company is willing to make to this community by investing in the west end of Dearborn. They have faith in remaining here and putting their money here in this community. Um, I believe our community members also would have faith in supporting some of our institutions that would also um, support Ford Motor Company in its quest for having those skilled workers that they're looking for in the future. And by continuing to support um, the college with uh, members' tax dollars sends a message that, that we are here and we believe in, in this college's ability to support Ford Motor and other um, business opportunities. Um, I, I would say that I, I would really like to see our investment go towards things that would increase our student enrollment and maintain our students and that would be a wise use of this money especially when it comes to marketing which we just don't hit the mark the same way some other community colleges are able to um, and in that e effect will then potentially produce five years down the road that stability, that buffer that we're using this one mill tax base um, to help support us moving forward because we put this money and invested it wisely now in order to um, pursue ways to support the college in its growth. Uh, we need to make sure that our students are successful. We need to know that we have a product that has value and we need to showcase it in a way that will bring um, the students here um, and finish out a two-year